Why was Josh the only kid that he was paying? The freaking... How is it that he's got a private plane, but the kids that were the main focus of the show and the reason why it even existed didn't get anything off of it? Josh was in the room that when that interview was done about what he did to them, watching them answer all of those questions. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, Megan Kelly's sitting there asking all these questions and stuff to these girls, but she probably walked in and shook his hand. The fact that he was in there watching those girls answer those questions, even if they did want to say anything about like what he did, they wouldn't have felt comfortable to because he was sitting there watching the whole thing. Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar laid out a contract in front of all of their kids with a measly $80,000. And I'm saying measly because he made a lot more than that from the show, okay? He asked them to sign their and their children's lives away to him. That is the worst kind of father I have ever heard of in my life. That is disgusting. People's eyes need to be open to the fact that those kids are trapped. If they ever wanted to say anything about the mistreatment that they've experienced in the Duggar family, they will never their entire lives be able to do that without facing legal trouble because they signed that contract. They signed their lives and their children's lives away to Jim Bob Duggar. And not just Jim Bob, but Mad Family Inc. Say Josh Duggar gets out one day and Jim Bob's on his deathbed and he gives Josh Duggar Mad Family Inc. Josh Duggar could tell them what to do. This just escalated and was such a horrible, horrible fight. Jim Bob has a really bad temper. That's what I've learned from this book. I asked you guys in my community tab if you wanted me to do a review of Jill Duggar's book, Counting the Cost. And a lot of you guys wanted me to do that and that works out because I also want to do that. That. This video is probably gonna be really long because as you guys can see, it is full of post-it notes. I made so many notes about this book. I've never stuck so many post-its in one book in my life. I didn't wanna miss anything. I wanted to make sure that I was able to highlight the most jaw-dropping moments in the book for you guys. And also, I feel like there's a lot in the book that you just don't see in the news. So if you didn't get the book and you just have been looking at headlines or just seeing the big wow moments that everybody's been talking about, I feel like there's other things in here that I haven't seen anyone mention. So I thought what I would do is kind of go over the whole book in the order that she wrote it. I will say this, I'm not telling you guys everything that's in it because that kind of takes from anybody wanting to buy it and I don't want to you know, contribute to people being like, oh, I already know everything that's in the book from Kyla, so I don't wanna purchase it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Because I will say this, especially once getting to the end of the book and hearing all about how Jim Bob mistreated them and basically stole from them from being on the Duggars shows on TLC, I feel like she deserves the support, especially the financial support. Like she has children, you know? It's pretty sad that I'm sitting there thinking more about that than her own father is, but before I even get into this, I think that if you guys would like to read it, it was a pretty good read and there were definitely moments where I actually stopped reading and had to start basically at the book because I was so upset at some of the stuff in here, but I am gonna go over the notes that I put in here. We'll read some quotes and things like that from it, but obviously I'm not gonna read through the whole book. I'm just going over it. To make it easier on myself, I'm gonna go over it in order of how it is written in the book. So there is some back and forth, okay? There's moments with Jim Bob that are just absolutely shocking and horrific that if I was gonna do a video just on that, I would probably organize it differently than she wrote it, but I'm gonna go over it the way that she did in the book. So the book starts out with a little bit of a bang where she's telling a story about how her and Derek were courting and they were outside the Duggar family house and they were both sitting on a sled. They were sitting on the same sled. Most people wouldn't think anything about that. But while she was sitting there talking to Derek, her mom came out and was basically like, no boys and girls on the same sled and like made this big deal about it even though it literally is the most normal thing ever. And Jill felt really embarrassed and shameful of it and was very apologetic to Derek and he was just confused as hell. He's like, I don't understand why this is a big deal. They always had eyes on them. You know, when they were courting, they had to have people kind of follow them around and things. And, and they weren't really having a lot of private conversations with just the two of them. They always had to have some sort of adult pres present or chaperone. That was one of those moments where they were sitting alone. And even then, 
Here's Michelle peeking out the window. And as you guys know, the Duggar kids were not allowed to dance, which I think is so terrible. They weren't allowed to listen to music with drums and, and they definitely were not allowed to listen to music that made them want to dance. So there's a portion of the beginning of the book where she's talking about that mom would play music. If any of the kids would start dancing, she would turn the music off and start talking to them about how they weren't supposed to be doing that. There's a quote in here from her mom that said, we need to be very, very careful about the way that we move our body. If you're shaking part of it, where do you think people will be drawn to look? And you don't want people looking at your bottom, do you? You don't want people thinking bad thoughts about you, right? And then she would go on and, you know, give them a scripture from the Bible, just trying to reaffirm how bad it was for these kids to dance. And that to me is just another instance where the Duggar parents make such an innocent, beautiful thing into something perverse when it doesn't need to be. Do you want to say this? I I feel like Michelle is just, is totally brainwashed by Jim Bob too. I mean, even in the very beginning, he was the one who told her to start dressing differently because she was making men think bad thoughts. Everything that Michelle believes is basically because Jim Bob told her to believe it. You know what I mean? And now she's reaffirming those things to her kids about how, you know, people are gonna think bad thoughts. And I just think this whole family's viewpoint all started with Jim Bob and his perverted way of thinking. Nobody thinks anything bad about people who were dancing. <laughs> like, that's so weird. And whether Jim Bob likes it or not, everybody has a butt and they move and that's normal. And if you're thinking thoughts about it, you have some repressed energy you probably need to go work on, like go get some therapy. There's also this whole part in the book where she's talking about how Josh, when he was younger, he had this club with these boys, um, his, his friends. And in this club at one point, they were trying to boy get people to boycott this gas station, this local gas station, because it had started selling porn. And the reason why they knew this was because Jim Bob took all of the kids and the family members into the room where they'd have like these meetings and discuss things. And Jim Bob set everybody down and started talking about how this gas station started selling pornography. And I'm like, why are you telling your kids this? Like that is so weird to me. Like what is the purpose of taking your children and setting them down and talking to them about that? Gosh, as a as a younger individual, you know, feels compelled to boycott this gas station and to get people to not want to go to it because it's selling porn, which as a parent, I do not think that you should be taking your children and sitting them down and being like, "Hey, this gas station has porn in it." Like why do they need to know this? How does this affect them? I just feel like that's so gross. She goes on to talk about being in the IBLP meetings, which I'm not gonna tell you guys about IBLP. I'm just gonna assume that you know about it. She was talking about how they have this thing called model families, where they would bring up this family, this picture perfect family. It was always one with like a ton of kids and just somebody that was trying to inspire, you know, everybody else in the audience to keep reproducing and having all these children and, and thinking, feeling, and believing the way that they did. And when I was reading it, all I could think about was how Jim Bob and Michelle were trying so hard to be this model family. They wanted to be that IBLP model family. And that was clearly their goal, was to be the ones that were on the stage in front of everybody that everybody was looking at like, oh, they're the ones doing it right. They're following all of IBLP's teachings. And again, it's so funny because Bill Gothard never got married and never had kids, but everybody in the audience is sitting there listening to him talk about how you need to reproduce and have children. But he never even did that. I don't know why anybody was ever listening listening to him and not questioning these things. They started going to this church where people were a little bit different than them. And during a Christmas program, they had a bunch of people, a bunch of younger individuals up there dancing. And the Duggar family did not like this, okay? So when they went home that night, Jim Bob sat everybody down and was like, I am so sorry. Can you imagine what that would do to these young individuals sitting there listening to their dad act like something was so horrific that they were probably enjoying? It was a Christmas play, you know? They probably were entertained by it, as we all should be, but then Jim Bob had to turn it into something bad. They were so brainwashed. It makes me sad. The way that they were raised forced them to think things when they'd see stuff. Like they didn't even realize that people like me or just like the average person 
doesn't think anything dirty or bad when we see somebody dancing. We don't think anything about it at all. But to them, they thought that people like us were just thinking these terrible things and that it was this perverse thing when it wasn't. There's nothing wrong with it. She also talks in this book about how Bill Gothard visited the family at one point in their house. After this was when Jana was invited to go work for Bill Gothard. And if you guys remember, Bill Gothard really liked young blonde girls working for him. I had no idea that Jana worked there. Let me know if you guys knew that down below. Is that something that people were aware of before it was in this book? Because I didn't know that. I would love to hear her stories, but we'll find out later in this book that a lot of these kids signed a contract where they're not allowed to speak anything negatively about the Duggar family. Jana's probably one of them. So we will probably never hear her say anything about what she went through. She goes on to talk about Jim Bob pressuring her to talk to Derek. And it is just so weird to me. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong if like a dad like meets a guy and thinks, hey, my daughter would probably really like him and get along with him. But it was the way he was doing it. It just came off like he had this goal in his mind that Derek is the one that Jill needs to marry, which thank God it turned out right and that she's happy. And Derek honestly has helped her so much like see through things. Jim Bob was just very like pushy on her getting with Derek and it makes me so uncomfortable. But as I was reading this book and continuing on and turning the pages, she didn't say this verbatim, but I can't help but feel like the pressuring that Jim Bob was doing to her to get with Derek was for the show, was that he was looking for a specific type of guy to get Jill to start courting to push the ratings on his show because 19 Kids and Counting was doing the best when a kid was getting married or having a baby or courting. Like when one of those big life things was happening, that's when people really were tuning in because they, that's the things they wanted to see, right? Was how do these really sheltered kids handle getting into relationships and how does this whole courting thing work? And it was just something that was just so unusual to the public. It really was seeming like Jim Bob was like trying to pressure her to get with Derek and to make sure everything was filmed because it would be really good for the show. And obviously with reality TV, like we know certain things are fake. If you don't know that, Sorry to be the one to break it to you. But a lot of times with reality TV, they will film things that aren't real to fit a narrative. And she talks about how when she went to go visit Derek for the first time on camera, that their first goodbye was fake and that she actually stayed longer than what the show portrayed on you know, camera. It was really just so apparent to me reading that, that their whole relationship was pressured by Jim Bob to happen for the ratings of the show. Like I said, I'm so glad it worked out in her favor and Derek is actually really good to her and helped, you know, take her blinders off so that she could see her family for what it is because, you know, they get married barely knowing these guys, right? Like that's, they they court really quickly and then they get married. It'd be so easily for one of these girls to end up in like a very toxic, abusive marriage because they're not taught, take your time and make sure that this person's a good person. They're taught to hurry up and get married and have sex and make a baby. So I'm really glad that like, you know, regardless of the fact that Derek was pu pushed onto Jill by Jim Bob, that it turned out to be um, something good and that she's happy, because it could have went in a completely different direction. She talks about how Jim Bob bought this private plane, and I think that is so important to mention because the ratings of the show were really high. So you know that Jim Bob was making bank. None of the kids were making any money at this point. So Jill and Derek had their wedding and all of that. Like, you know he was making so much money, not even just from the show, but press and all of that. That is when he laid out those papers before her, before her rehearsal dinner, so right before she got married, having her sign this contract. Now, this is the one that she didn't read. I'm gonna assume that you guys know about it. If you don't, I talked about it in one of my previous videos, but Jim Bob basically laid out a contract in front of the kids and had them, and I'm saying kids, but a lot of them were adults at the time, and had them sign it, but because they trusted their dad at the time, she didn't read what was in it. 
this is gonna come back up later and it's really bad. And that goes into where she was saying that when she had her first son, they were really pressuring her to film it, which she ended up giving them some footage that they filmed from inside the room. But originally she did not want this birth filmed, but it was very pressured and obviously Jim Bob wanted it filmed because it was good for the show. And also they had to announce their son through People Magazine. The first picture that Derek ever saw of his newborn son was when they were coming in to say, this is the picture that we're sending to them. So everything was just cool. You're getting married, but this is gonna be good for the show. Cool, you're having a baby, but can we get a picture so we can send it to People Magazine? And this is when Derek was really like opening Jill's eyes to like, this is not normal, Jill. Like, this is not okay, but she grew up on the show. So to her, it was so normal, but he's like, this is not right. He was not vibing it at all. So I'm coming in with a voiceover because I read a quote from the book here, but then I realized I probably shouldn't be reading quotes directly from the book. So basically, what I was reading to you guys was talking about how there was a guy that worked for TLC that really wanted them to do certain things for the show and because Jim Bob wanted them to do what he wanted them to do that they felt that if they went against their wishes that they would be getting out from under Jim Bob's umbrella of protection. That is the dangers of their belief system with the umbrella of protection is that Jim Bob could say, anything but these kids are going to feel so pressured to do what he says and what he wants or that they're going to be outside of the umbrella of protection and they're taught that if they're outside of the umbrella of protection they could get into a car accident they could get cancer and die like somebody they love could have something terrible happen to them the fear is instilled into them so heavily that if you do not do what your father says you are going to be the reason that something fatal happens to you or someone that you care about. Pressure of that and telling someone that is so abusive. I didn't know this, but Jill was actually recovering from a C-section from her first son when In Touch released the police reports from the malignant of her and her sisters. So I've had a C-section and I know that recovery. And I also know the recovery while you're also having your first son, your first child, and it's a lot. And you don't know until you know. There's no way for you to know how hard that is on your body and mind and how difficult and also wonderful, but difficult of a time that that, that moment is. The fact that all of that was released while she just had her first son makes me so sad because she should have been able to relish in the birth of her son and enjoy him being a newborn. But I know that she had to have been so almost disassociated from the situation because of all of this coming out. When all of this came out into the public, Jill and Jessa volunteered to be the ones to do this interview. And I think it's really important some of the things that she mentioned about that in this, like how Jim Bob was protecting Josh and trying to keep Josh safe. And Josh didn't have to come out and say anything, but he didn't protect his daughters and, and keep them safe from it. He should have told Josh, hey, you need to get out there and do this interview about what happened because you were the cause of this. But instead he was like, yeah, go ahead. You were the ones that were hurt in the past. You were the ones that are traumatized but you can go out there and do this interview. And she also described Josh's demeanor at that time in this book. And he just had a lot of arrogance. He was cracking jokes. He was really, he wasn't acting like he was upset about anything at all. And it's probably because he knew his parents were gonna protect him just like they always did. And do you guys know that interview that they did with Megan Kelly about the in touch police records that were released? She said that when they were in the middle of that interview, that Josh was sitting on a couch watching Watching them. Josh was in the room that when that interview was done about what he did to them, watching them answer all of those questions. How that was even allowed to happen is beyond me. He should not have been within ears reach of that interview but he was there. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, Megan Kelly sitting there asking all these questions and stuff to these girls, but she probably walked in and shook his hand. You know what I mean? Like when you know what goes on behind the curtain, it's just so eye open. The fact that he was in there watching those girls answer those questions, like even if they did want to say anything, which they probably wouldn't have, but even if they did want to say anything about like what he did, 
that wouldn't be in his favor, they wouldn't have felt comfortable to because he was sitting there watching the whole thing. Then she talks about the Ashley Madison leak. Okay, now this was when it came out that Josh was on a website that was for married people having affairs. Get sent away again. This is another time that he gets sent away. He just keeps getting sent away as if they think that's gonna work. He was probably hammering some nails or something for his therapy. But Jim Bob brings them all into a room because he had some news to share about Josh. And he goes on to talk about how there were so many paparazzi following them, but they were able to get Josh there safely. And that's when Jill started thinking about about how he was protecting Josh so heavily, but not protecting them. She talks in the book about when Derek asked Jim Bob if they would be able to get some money from their time on the show. Because if you guys remember, Derek had been tweeting to people about how they didn't make a dime off of their time on the show, which is so messed up to me because they're literally the reason why there is a show. Like Jim Bob's head is so big, literally and metaphorically, because he thinks that I'm getting post-it notes stuck to my arm. But he thinks that he's the one that deserves all that money. And like, how is it that he's got a private plane, but the kids that were the main focus of the show and the reason why it even existed didn't get anything off of it. Jill was really nervous. And she said that she could tell that Jim Bob tensed up when he asked this question. So Derek asks him if they would be able to receive a percentage of basically what they earned from being on the show. And Jim Bob totally dodges the question and starts talking about about how, you know, they wanted to spread their ministry and totally ignoring what he was saying and goes on to this whole God speech, trying to deflect because he didn't want to give them any money. I'm like, how was that even in relation to what he just said? And Derek asked Jim Bob if they would be able to receive a certain percentage of what they earned. He's like, I'm not letting this go. Like you just dodged my question. It says that Jim Bob said that they used to pay Josh, but decided not to do that after a while because it wasn't a very good idea. Listen, I don't like Josh either, but what did he mean by that? Like, what did he mean by it wasn't a good idea to give your kids money? And also, why was Josh the only kid that he was paying? The freaking pedophile. It makes you wonder a lot about Jim Bob and Jim Bob's personal demons. I don't wanna say shit, but like his sympathy for Josh makes me wonder what's wrong with him. And then Jim Bob goes on to say that Michelle was the one who had all of the children and they wouldn't even have a show if it wasn't for her. So then Derek is like, but we've provided value for this show. And then he asks Derek what he thinks he's worth. And then that's when Derek's like, well, what's the show worth? And then he goes into like preaching to him about whenever they started the show, that it was like a ministry and they just wanted to speak to people about God. And he said, I'm not saying your work here isn't great, but we are reaching more people through the show than you are here on the mission field. He He's referring to when Jill and Derek were overseas and like they were hearing gunshots like right outside of their house. Like it was a really scary place where their lives were in danger there. And Jim Bob just said that the work that he's doing on the show is more important than what they were doing there. Like, why did you have to throw a dig at them like that? And you can tell this is when Jim Bob just starts having it out for Derek and realizes that he doesn't like him because he is questioning him. And Jim Bob doesn't like to be questioned because he is the man, the authority. And I think this is when Jim Bob started getting scared. I think somewhere in the back of his head, he was like, I need to pay them something because this could come back and bite me in the butt if I don't. So this is when he decided to offer the kids $80,000 each, which you know what they were getting from the show and then some was way more than that. He had a private plane, okay? Some of the kids just weren't aware at how low of a ball that was. Like he was low balling them so hard, but they didn't know that. And Jim Bob knew that his kids didn't know that and used that to his advantage. But it wasn't just that he was gonna give them $80,000, he was gonna make them sign a contract before they got this $80,000. Contract was with Mad Family Inc., which was a company that her parents had set up. And in this contract, it said that for the next seven years, plus an unlimited amount of years beyond that, if the company decided, they would have to commit to make making themselves, their children, and any children yet to be born available to any show that Mad Family Inc. created or participated in. They would be paid for it, but they couldn't negotiate the amount that would be set by Mad Family Inc. And then with all 
of that, they would also have to sign an NDA that would remain active for the rest of their lives. This was the contract that was laid before all of the Duggar kids that they had to sign in order to get this $80,000. Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar laid out a contract in front of all of their kids with a measly $80,000. And I'm saying measly because he made a lot more than that from the show, okay? he asked them to sign their and their children's lives away to him. That is the worst kind of father I have ever heard of in my life. That is disgusting. We're gonna come back to that, but I wanna keep this in order of how she wrote it. So she talks about when she made a decision to wear pants and oh, this was a big issue for Jim Bob, okay? When he found out that Jill was wearing pants, he did not have very nice things to say. Mom's got this book somewhere that talks a lot about clothing and modesty and what it does to men when they see women wearing pants and stuff. So maybe you should give that a read. She said that when she got home after that conversation with Jim Bob that she cried. That is so sad. What a f idiot. And then when he found out that she pierced her nose, he called her and left her a voicemail talking about how she didn't need to do this because she was gonna ruin her lives and that her little sisters were going to be affected. This is in regards to her getting her nose pierced. Okay. Jim Bob's embarrassing. I'm getting secondhand embarrassment from this idiot. And then Michelle later told her that it was a good thing that she didn't answer Jim Bob's call about her nose ring and let it go straight to voicemail because he was extremely upset. So Jim Bob has a really bad temper. That's what I've learned from this book. And he's an awful man, an awful, awful man. So there was text exchange that were sent, emails, things between the two of them that were just not good. So they decided to have a mediator from Jill and Derek's church to sit down with her and her parents so that they could have an open discussion about things that were going on. And the mediator was supposed to help mediate things, but this just escalated and was such a horrible, horrible fight. During this mediation, her dad started berating her because she accused him of verbally abusing her in a text that she had previously sent. He was begging for her to apologize, but she couldn't apologize because she truly felt that he had verbally abused her. During this conversation, she said that he took a step towards her and was towering over her in an act of aggression, accusing her of crying because her conscience was talking to to her. He was yelling at her that she was guilty, and that is when she said, you treat me worse than you treat my pedophile brother. Jim Bob would later send her an email tallying up all of the money that he had spent on her over the years, basically saying that what she thought she earned from the show, she didn't deserve because he bought her things like the times that he took her out to eat, he added up as $100 a month. He added up the clothes that they bought. He added up the meals that she ate at home. And that is just, that's not even half of it. Like I said, I don't wanna tell you guys everything that's in the book because I don't want you, I don't wanna get sued, number one. And I also want you guys, if you wanna read it, to be able to go read it. But Jim Bob added up every every dime that was spent on Jill and basically said she wasn't worth the money that they believed that they should get from being on the show because he did the bare minimum as a father. And that contract, that $80,000 contract where the kids' lives were basically owned by her parents, some of the Duggar kids signed that contract. You know, I've always wondered why not more of the kids have come out and spoke because there's a lot of adult children, which I'm not saying that not all of them are in total support of Jim Bob and Michelle. I don't know. But if they ever did want to come out and speak about the mistreatment that they've experienced in the Duggar family, they will never their entire lives be able to do that without facing legal trouble because they signed that contract. They signed their lives and their children's lives away to Jim Bob Duggar. That is up. That is on another level. That is messed up. And then to add to it, when Jim Bob saw that Jill and Derek were having a couple drinks in that Instagram picture that was posted that everybody was making a big deal about, he offered to send Derek to the same place that he sent Jim Bob to for alcoholism because he thought that Derek was an alcoholic because he was having a beer. Just when I thought I couldn't stand Jim Bob enough, I went ahead and I read this book. 
I just can't believe he would do that to his kids. And also, if you're asking somebody to sign an NDA, like in the Duggar family, why? What is it you don't want him to say? These parents are just disgusting. And you know, he may have had Michelle sign an NDA. He may have slapped one in front of her and said, girl, you need to sign this. Jim Bob obviously has a temper. He has a habit of defending and sticking up for pedophiles. Jim Bob is a disgusting creature, an absolute disgrace. I'm so sorry to Jill, and I know she loves her parents. She said some positive stuff about them at the end. I know that she probably feels bad for saying things negative about him because that's her dad, but she did the right thing because it deserves to be out there what he's doing. And people's eyes need to be open to the fact that those kids are trapped. If they ever wanted to say anything, they couldn't. No matter what Jim Bob did, they couldn't say anything. That was the most jaw-dropping thing for me from this, that they are so trapped it's so sad. They've been trapped within the cult and IBLP and their teachings, and now they're trapped legally and they can never speak. And anything that Jim Bob wants them to do, they have to do it. And not just Jim Bob, but Mad Family Inc. So if say Josh Duggar gets out one day and Jim Bob's on his deathbed and he gives Josh Duggar Mad Family Inc., Josh Duggar could tell them what to do. Wow. That's some food for thought. Mm, that is disturbing, guys. I wonder if Anna Duggar signed some sort of NDA too. I, that that makes me sit there and think about that. that. There's a big possibility that she had something in her contract that said she couldn't say nothing about Josh. Oof. I don't know, it makes you think. Y'all are gonna have to let me know what you think down below about this. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave me a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll be seeing you guys soon for another one.